Good morning, everybody. TGIF. Man, it's been a long week without you. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. We're going to visit the, the book of Ezekiel today, but I hope you guys have had a wonderful week. We had blizzard conditions again last night out here. It was incredible. It just all of a sudden picked up, thank God. Um, both my boys made it home, Darren and Brandon with the semis. Um, Brandon was, at, or Darren was actually on it, going to take another load uh, south of Fargo, and he was out here about 20 miles, got up on the hill, and he said he couldn't see his hand in front of his face, so he came home. So I, I just thank God that they're both home safe. So today the winds are supposed to be... Uh, quite high too but you know our our farm is facing the east and it looks nice and clear out here um but i am going to run into langdon to run some errands today so i hope that everything is is good out that way and i know minnesota folks have had some bad weather too so god bless our farm and god bless all of you guys wherever you are today and i'm glad to be back so let's start with our morning affirmations it's been a week since we've reminded ourselves of this I am important. Today is going to be a great day. The world needs me. Today I choose happiness and I believe in myself. Today is a new and fresh start. Today I will do my best and today and every day I am God's child and he loves me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So obviously, with uh, um, not getting in touch with each other, we have a lot of prayers and acts of kindness to share. Um, and so get your journals out or pencil and paper, um, and we'll get rolling on this. So um, let's see. So we prayed, <clears throat> uh, Kathy Nash had asked us to pray for Abby a while back. Um, because uh, she thought she had cancer. She's in her early 20s. But instead, they found out that she has a treatable growth on her thyroid. And it's a thyroid disease that, you know, she will need to be on medication for possibly a long time, possibly her whole life. But praise the Lord, that is so much better than cancer. So please keep Abby in your prayers uh, for continued healing. Uh, Scott D. Seth uh, had surgery on Wednesday, and um, he the doctor was very, very pleased with the way things went. He said Scott handled the surgery very, very well, which doesn't surprise me. Um, and he had actually got up and walked a little. But then I, uh, I texted Sally, his wife, yesterday, and he kind of had a rough night then on to do be Wednesday night. Um, but, uh, you know, Scott just had a lot, a lot, a lot of problems with his back. So that, that is expected, but he is a trooper and he's keeping moving and I don't know when he'll be home yet. I'm going to reach out to Sally today, but please keep Scott and Sally, um, in your prayers. I am just so hoping that this surgery will do the trick for him because, uh, he's been in a lot of pain for a long, long time. Um, Tracy, a friend from back home, from back in high school, um, asked for prayers for her son who is happy having open heart surgery. Now, um, I haven't gotten a update on that, um, but God knows and just keep him and his medical staff and the family in your prayers. Bobby Pierce, <clears throat> who is an old racing friend of mine, <clears throat> excuse me, requested prayers for his dad. Now his dad had cancer a while back and now it's returned in his bladder. Um, and he's going to be having surgery or had surgery. Um, but please keep uh, Bobby's dad and family and medical staff in your prayers. Um, Deb, an old friend of mine from back home, old, old friend, we go way, way back. She requested prayers for her son, Dez. Um, I don't know what that's about, but it doesn't matter. It's not my business because God knows. So please keep Des in your prayers. Um, Kathy Nash also requests prayers for Terry Danielson. I believe it's her cousin, but it's a family member. And he lost his wife. And he's going to be going through some really, really tough times up ahead here. So please keep Terry in your prayers. 
Larry Kanoki from the Admore area here um, was having some foot problems. And so prayers are requested for him and his doctor appointments. Um, Melanie, my good, good friend from Wilmer, very good friend. Um, we prayed for her dad who was hospitalized with COPD. Oh, what was it, a week or so ago? And uh, unfortunately, my friends, he passed away. He passed away. Um, but Melanie and, and the family are full of the Holy Spirit, and they know exactly where he is. Um, but please keep them in your prayers. Um, another friend, Colette, uh, her friend fell. I think we talked about this a while ago and fractured some ribs. Um, and he had some other medical problems as well um, and was treated, came home. But then he went back into the hospital and came home um, that evening. But I don't have any more updates on that. But uh, Colette's friend Steve really needs a lot, a lot of prayers. Um, so my friend Gina, oh my goodness, my friend Gina from back in the Atwater um, Grove City area in Minnesota there. Um, wonderful woman. She received word that um, her son, Ethan, who was in the, I believe it was Air Force, but forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, and he was going to, be a going to be a military chaplain, but was doing some air traffic controlling right now. Him and two friends were in a wedding and they were on their way to Pensacola, Florida, and were in a car accident. So she received word that he was in a car accident, but that's all that she knew. Then she received word that he was in uh, the Pensacola hospital. That's all she heard. And so then she reached out and did some more investigating. And unfortunately, my friends, Ethan did not sustain the injuries from the car accident. Ethan was 20 years old full of life, always fun, bubbly. I remember him when he was little and Gina was helping me with the fundraiser and her, you know, her kids were there and um, it is just such a devastation. But the very, very cool thing is um, their family is full of the Holy Spirit as well. And I'm, you know, I don't know if Gina's in shock yet or if it's just the Holy Spirit working through her, but she is she has just been so very strong throughout all this. So please keep uh, the Lilleberg, Gina Lilleberg, um, and the family in your prayers. Um, Ethan is supposed to be coming home today. Um, the military is flying him home. And then, of course, they are doing a um, parade, per se, if that's what you want to call it, um, back to Atwater. Um, and he's supposed to be, I think, arriving in between... What did they say? 8.30 and 9.30 tonight. So if any of you folks from Minnesota would like to join that, that is what's happening. So God bless the Lilleberg family. Um, my friend Sabrina that we've been praying for is doing much better. Um, praise the Lord for that. She wanted to thank everybody for the, the prayers. And then um, I can't mention any names here. But we have some situations uh, with some folks that um, that I'd like you to pray for. And like I always say, God knows, so we don't particularly have to know the name. Um, we have um, <clears throat> one gal that found out that she's um, got stage 4 breast cancer. And so she is starting chemo right away. Um, so please send prayers up for her. Also, um, another friend fell and um, abstained a brain bleed and no brain function. So please pray for that individual. Um, one more person um, has brain cancer and um, is taking radiation and is waiting on the PET scan results. So please pray for good results on that. Oh my goodness, so much. And also, my friends, of course, we are going to keep praying for the Russia-Ukraine um, invasion, war, whatever it is over there. Um, Ukraine has been so very inspirational. But always remember that Putin and Russia 
folks need prayers as well. Um, God knows how to fix this. Um, thy will be done. But just keep praying. Keep praying that thy will be done. It's so very important that we turn to prayer right now. Um, all of us from the whole world. So let's move on to our acts of kindness. Um, Heather shared um, with me that her, her boyfriend visited her, I think it's fiance, visited her at work and brought her her favorite tea. What a nice surprise. Great job, boyfriend, fiance. Um, and then, oh my goodness, maybe you guys seen this on Facebook, but I just had to share it. Um, it was a Chick-fil-A post. There were three police officers that came into Chick-fil-A and a little boy, oh, he had to be maybe 8, 10 years old. Um, he went up to the police officers and asked if he could pray over them. And so he grabbed, they said, yes, absolutely. And so he grabbed their hands and he thanked the Lord for calling them to be police officers and asked the Lord to protect them while they were busy protecting others. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, my friend Christy shared with me that her neighbor cleaned out her sidewalk and driveway and her son brought her over a coffee. What a great day for Christy. Good things happen to good people. Praise the Lord. Um, and you guys may have seen this on Facebook, but I want to share this as well. Even if it's not true, it's a nice thought. I, You know, sometimes when you see stuff on social media, you're not 100% sure, but it's still a wonderful thought and act of kindness. But um, the Polish moms left strollers at the train station for the Ukrainian moms who were arriving who might need them um, when they arrive in Poland with their kids. And, you know, I have just heard so much because, you know, years ago, Poland um, was not so quaint on um, letting people into their country. And I have just seen stuff now how they are so welcoming. They're preparing food. They're sustaining to the needs of, of the Ukrainian people. God bless them. God bless them. Jolene shared that her friend Brittany took her to the hospital um, Jolene's been having some kidney issues, so please keep her in your prayers. But then her friend Brittany did some grocery shopping for her and also gave her some banana bread because her potassium level was low. How awesome is that to be able to treat yourself to banana bread? Because, you know, bananas are high in potassium. No sugar, calories, or anything like that in there, of course, but they're high in potassium. So um, thank you, Brittany, for taking care of Jolene. And then again, we thank Lori Legacy Lowe um, and her mom and dad um, for donating more eggs. Uh, they brought over 50 dozen to Lawton on Wednesday night for our church service. And um, Lori has a lot of chickens, obviously, because I think I've gotten 100 dozen in the last few weeks here. And her mom, Lois, is uh, and Bud are washing all the eggs and helping her out because, you know, Lori had some problems with her foot. So God bless all of you guys. Um, I've shared them with um, nursing homes and people from the church. And, you know, the cool thing about it, you know, Lori, if you don't realize this, if you're watching, um, the eggs that I'm sharing with people are turned around to then sharing with other people, like at the nursing homes and even the people from our, our church, they are making stuff for um, our church um, meals, you know, bars or cakes or cookies or, or whatever they would use eggs in. And so they are paying it forward. So God bless you. Matter of fact, there was um, a family where the, that were getting ready to, um, I think they were gonna, one of them was gonna go to basketball tournaments this weekend. And another one where uh, another family was going on a trip. And so they took the eggs to boil them into hard-boiled eggs to have in the car for snacks. Boy, that has to be a good smell, huh? <laughs> but hey, <laughs> so praise the Lord and God bless you legacies. Um, 
it is so very much appreciated by everyone. Okay, so I'd like to read you a couple things here first. Today might be a little bit longer than normal, sorry, but I have to make up for the other two days. Um, it's an act of kindness. After leaving out of the store today, my daughter did something that really made me stop and think. There was a guy sitting there crying, and she asked me, Did you see that man crying? What's wrong with him? <clears throat> I said, Yes, but I'm not sure. Maybe he's just sad. Um, the little girl, or wait. Oh, and then the little girl said, Maybe he's hot and thirsty. She walked over to him and goes, Hi, sir. Be happy. It's a nice day. It's not raining. Are you hot? Why don't you go home? The ground is dirty. He says, I have no home, but I will be okay. She looked at him with a saddest face and goes, So that means you're homeless? So you have no food because you have no refrigerator? She gave him just a few dollars out of her little purse and, and her drink and said, Please go eat. It would make me happy. I like McDonald's. You should go there. I could tell she made his day. On top of that, two more people came up and gave money as well. We had a small conversation and he explained that his trailer burnt down and he lost everything, including his wife. I felt for him. It just warms my heart that a six-year-old led by example this morning. It is so awesome. Kids see no color, and that's exactly how it should be. It's not just a statement saying that the children are our future. It's a fact. And that gives me a little more hope for the world. That is credit to Kenyatta Lewis. Um, and her daughter and Kenyatta are African American. And the man who lost his home um, was white. And she's 100% right. Kids do not see color unless it's brought to their attention. I first had experience with me. So God bless you, little one. God bless you. So as most of you guys know, and grab your tablets again, um, and I did, I think, post this on the High Plains page, but we are in the season of Lent, okay? And I found this really neat thing from Pope Francis. So, do you want to fast this Lent? We all know what fasting is. We give up something, right? Well, here's some ideas of what you can fast with. Fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and have trust in God. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Fast from pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness and fill your hearts with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate to others. Fast from grudges and be reconciled. Fast from words and be silent so that you can listen. Amen, and praise the Lord. Love that, love that, love that. Definitely something to keep in our back pocket. All right. <coughs> so with that, <coughs> let us pray. Dear Father, during this season of Lent and every day thereafter, we pray that our physical hunger will give way to our spiritual longing. Help us to return to you with all of our heart. When life's burdens and irritations arrive, we pray for acceptance and grace. We know that we all have attitudes and prejudices that could bear changing. Help us to learn new lessons and see deeper truths. Help us to build our communities through acts of kindness. Dear Father, please help us willingly open our past and present wounds to your healing power. Please forgive us for straying from you this past year, and know that we admit and repent all our sins. Sometimes our good intentions get sidetracked and we grow weary of doing what we ought to do. We pray today, dear Lord, that we remain faithful to your commitments, to those around us, and to ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
love it love it love it so today my friends we're in the book of ezekiel okay so i am going to go through the outline real quick here okay so the outline of ezekiel um in chapter one through three we have the introduction and call of ezekiel so chapter one verses one through three is the introduction and then uh verses four through chapter three verse 27 is the first vision okay um the coming destruction and captivity of judah is in chapters 4 through 24. Chapter 4 through 7 is the judgments against Israel. Um, chapter 8 through 11 is the temple vision. And then chapter 12 through 24 is the explanations of God's judgment. Um, chapters 25 through 32 is the judgment against other nations. Uh, the judgment against Judah's neighbors is in chapter 25. The judgment against Tyre is 26 through 28. And the judgment against Egypt is 29 through 32. Now the restoration of God's people is in chapters 33 through 48. The watchman uh, talks about the watchman in chapter 33 verses 1 through 20. Uh, the fail, or the, excuse me, the fall of Jerusalem is in chapter 33, 21 through 33. Talks about the shepherds and the sheep in chapter 40, or 34 and judgment against the mountains of Edom in chapter 35. Consolation for the mountain of Israel in chapter 36. Chapter 37 is the restoration of Israel. Chapters 38 and 39 talks about Gog and Magog. And chapters 40 through 48 is the vision of restoration. So there's a few themes in Ezekiel here, and um, they are God is the sovereign judge. He will judge rightly all people and nations. Individual responsibility. God does not punish individuals for other people's sins. The grace and mercy of God. God in his mercy will rescue a remnant from the coming destruction. God stands ready to forgive any who will truly turn to him and repent. And last, hope for the future. The faithful will receive God's coming kingdom in all its glory. So the book of Ezekiel deals with one of the most important questions for God's people both then and now. Is God present with us or has he abandoned us? The Israelites had become rebellious and disobedient. They took for granted God's blessings and present and they were disloyal to the God of their ancestors. Now reminder for many years and through many prophets, God warned these folks about this and called them back to him, but they did not listen. At one point in 597 BC, God's judgment arrived with terrible consequences. Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar conquered Jerusalem and carried away many of the leaders in the nation, including King Jeho Jehoiakim, other government officials, and other priests. Now that group of people, even as they were exiled to Babylon, 800 miles away, they continued to think that God would destroy the Babylonians shortly and make things right again. God then sent these folks a prophet named Ezekiel, who came from a priestly family and received his calling from God in 593 BC. Now throughout Ezekiel's long ministry and in many creative ways, he explained to the Israelites the meaning of of God's presence with them. Now when God's people are faithful and humbly walk before God, God's presence is a source of blessing, peace, and fruitfulness. However, when God's people are disloyal, rebellious, and adulterous, 
God's present is a terrifying thing because it means judgment and correction. Now, because God is merciful and compassionate, his presence also means forgiveness, salvation, restoration, and hope. Now, the prophet Ezekiel um, was from the priestly line of Buzi, B-U-Z-I. And it is said that he wrote this book of Ezekiel. Now, being from the temple priests of Jerusalem, Ezekiel was taken from the exiles to Babylon in 597 B.C. Ezekiel lived with his wife along with many of the other folks that were exiled by the river Kibar near the Babylonian city of Nippur. Now, most scholars agree that Ezekiel received his call from God when he was about 30 years old, therefore then beginning his ministry as a priest. His ministry could be seen as maybe quite bizarre in a way because here's a few things that that describe his bizarreness. Um, Ezekiel lied motionless for long periods of time and was mute. He did not mourn the death of his wife and he, re he received strange and vivid visions and behaved in unusual ways such as shaving his head with a sword and then um, burning it, cutting it, and scattering his hair around the city. But the strangeness of his ministry pointed to terrible times that God's people were experiencing. And it pointed to their stubbornness and rejections of God's encouragement to repentance. And it pointed to the years of exile and the suffering and punishment they would experience. Now the book of Ezekiel contains dates for many of God's answers that Ezekiel received from his visions. We, we date his first vision to 593 BC and the last one in 571 BC, which means that Ezekiel's ministry lasted about 22 years. Now, Ezekiel may then have written his book shortly after the end of his public ministry. The events and prophecies of the book occurred during the period when different groups of people from Judah were forced on the long march and exiled to Babylon. The Assyrian Empire had taken the northern kingdom of Israel captive over a hundred years earlier. And prominent people in Judah were taken into exile in Babylon over a period then of seven year, or several years. Matter of fact, Ezekiel himself was taken captive as well. Ezekiel, though, had many prophecies for many people and places. And I think it's important to visit each one, therefore allowing us as we go through the books of the Bible to see how each one played out. So I am going to flip to this page so I didn't have to type them all out here. Um, and so here are his prophecies. I will give you the subject and um, the prophecy, okay? Israel, the, prof uh, the subject is Israel prophecy. The end has come for the kingdom of Israel. Judah, the nation of Judah will fall to Babylon. Jerusalem, Jerusalem will be besieged and destroyed. The temple will be desecrated. The prince in Jerusalem, Zedekiah will be captured and taken to Babylon where he will die, but he will never see Babylon. Ezekiel's words were precisely fulfilled. Ammon, A-M-M-O-N, Moab and Edom. Although their ancestors made them close relatives of Israel, these nations were hostile to Israel and Judah. God will judge them. Philistia, Tyre, Sidon, Egypt. God will judge the neighboring nations and city, and cities and states around Israel and Judah who were hostile or led 
Israel to worship idols. Gog of Magog, Persia, Cush, Put, Sheba, Dedan, Tarshish, and the coastlands. God rules over all nations. Not only will Israel and Judah be judged along with their neighbor nations, but so will the nations of the north, south, east, and west. So these are the prophecies that Ezekiel shared with people um, that came to life. So despite the many warnings through the prophets and Ezekiel, most Israelites did not believe that God would allow evil people to conquer Jerusalem and destroy the temple. Even when the Babylonians <clears throat> conquered Jerusalem and exiled a portion of the population to Babylon, these people who were exiled still believed that God would destroy Babylon and rescue them sooner rather than later. Um, and if you're not following this, um, that's a great thing to believe in God, right? But they miss the point. They miss the point of the reason that this was happening. Um, you know, God says you have to be accountable for your actions and take responsibility. And this was God's um, punishment, per se, to the folks of Israel because of their disobedience, their adultery, um, and their dismay. And, um, and so God was going to make them suffer first. But as we read here, we will find that God was still with them. Now, Ezekiel's prophecy proved sadly true when King Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem and the temple in 586 BC. Ezekiel told these people that it was going to happen because of their actions. But yet, here's what I'm talking about. God's presence did not abandon his people. Rather, as Ezekiel saw in a vision that God went to Babylon to be with his people and saw that God's presence would remain with them. Now, those who believe in Jesus as their King and Savior, has, they have God's presence with them always through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit renews our hearts so we can be obedient and faithful to God. The book of Ezekiel is a reminder to not become complacent, taking for granted God's grace and blessings. The New Testament reminds us that we must grow in our faith, work on our salvation, live like children of light, and to be doers of the word. Um, you'll have to excuse me. Um, one of our puppies has um, congestive heart failure, and um, he's kind of taken a turn for the worse here. So if you're wondering what that noise is, it is him coughing. So we could use some prayers too. But to continue, the New Testament quotes um, or alludes to the book of Ezekiel over 60 times. And about 40 times of those are in the book of Revelation. Some of the most important imagery that Jesus used to explain his ministry to his disciples comes from the book of Ezekiel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jesus is the true temple because he is Emmanuel meaning God with us. He is the shepherd king that Ezekiel spoke about, and Jesus is a source of living waters. <clears throat> okay. Now in the first three chapters of Ezekiel, we see his call to ministry. Ezekiel was given a specific task for a particular time. But we can all learn from his call to ministry. Now, when I say ministry, I don't just mean vocational ministry, although that is included. If we are Christians, we have a ministry. We all have a ministry. We have friends and family that need to hear the gospel and should have a local church where we can encourage others, pray for others, and use our spiritual gifts. Every Christian has a ministry, and we can learn a few things about the ministry from Ezekiel's call. First of all, <clears throat> our ministry starts with us observing God, being into the true God. 
Now, chapter 1 begins with an incredible vision of God. As Ezekiel saw a vision of God in this way, he fell on his face. For us, we have the scriptures that reveal God to us. We should be seeing, reading, and observing God through scriptures. And as we do, we'll be reminded of who we are. If we are not walking with God in this way, my friends, it will affect our ministry that God calls us to do. If our hearts are not growing warm in fellowship with our Creator, then they are likely growing cold. Next, success isn't numbers. It's faithfulness. I love this one for being where I am um, with five small churches. Our numbers are increasing, though, by the way. Um, we've had great numbers um, over the last few weeks of church attendance. But I like this because we hear that Ezekiel was told from the beginning that the people he was sent to preach to would not respond. I don't know about you, but that sounds very difficult to me. Now, I can't imagine going to church each Sunday or Wednesdays now or church school or confirmation or men or women's Bible study to share God's word and the message of God and then know that no one is listening to me. That'd be horrible. You know, and I've always said, which I don't encourage, but I've always said, I will preach to one or 100 or 1,000, okay? Um, but success isn't in numbers. So too often we define success in terms of numbers, budget, or other tangible figures. I like that too. By those standards, Ezekiel would be a terrible prophet. However, God defines, defines success in our faithfulness to him. We might share the gospel with someone who rejects it, right? We can lead a horse to water, my friends, but we can't make them drink. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. He can make them drink. Our job is to continue sharing the gospel with anyone the Lord puts in our path. And we mustn't put pressure on ourselves, though, to do something we have no power to accomplish. We must just continue to be faithful to God by sharing the gospel of the Lord. Next, we may not always like what God asks us to do. After the vision and call, the Spirit takes Ezekiel back to the Shav Shabar Canal. One would expect to see Ezekiel on a spiritual high. But however, we see that he was overwhelmed. Now, God may call us to do things we don't like at first. But then we should pray that he changes our heart and desires. But in the meantime, our call is to obey. God may have us minister to that family member that we don't like speaking to. Or he may ask us to minister to that boss, co-worker that we don't like. Whether we like it or not, we are to obey. Next, expect persecution. God tells Ezekiel that the people wouldn't listen to him. But he is to continue proclaiming his word. <clears throat> he warns him, and you, son of man, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. <clears throat> Excuse me, you guys. <clears throat> I'm going to start over with that verse. And you, son of man, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. Though burrs and thorns are with you, and you sit on scorpions, do not be dismayed by their dark scowls, even though they are rebels. That's in Ezekiel 2, verse 6. Now, in our country, we don't expect persecution, right? However, we continue to see change and more hatred for Christ and his church. We don't know what the future holds, but scripture tells us to expect persecution. Like Ezekiel, it may be words and looks, 
but let us resolve in our heart to stick to God's message, no matter the consequences. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. Next, we will be held accountable. Now, in the second half, half of chapter 3, God warns Ezekiel that he will hold him accountable for his ministry. If the wicked won't listen to Ezekiel when he preaches, then they will die in their sin. But Ezekiel's hands are clean. However, if Ezekiel doesn't warn them, they will die in their sin and their blood will be on his hands. Ezekiel's hands. Our job, as we noted above, as we just talked about, is to warn people of the judgment to come and give them the hope and good news of the gospel. Now, not everyone we share with will believe, but if we've told them, then we've cleansed our hands. However, if we shrink back from warning them and they die in their sin, then there is blood on our hands. Let us feel the weight of this warning, my friends, and let it drive us to share and be faithful to the message God has given us. We are his disciples. Amen. Amen. So with that, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, church this weekend is, let me double check here just to be sure. I know it's Fairdale and Nakoma. And then Fairdale and Nakoma at nine and Adams and Concordia and Edmore um, at 11. Um, for those of you <clears throat> from around here that'll be going to church, um, remind me, and if you have any of the baby bottles from the pregnancy center, um, please bring those to church. We'll be collecting them, and I will run them to, to Park River to the pregnancy center. And So please tell your friends as well. So with that, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon each and every one of you and the whole world with his favor and give you all and everybody in the world his amazing peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is another gift from God, my friends, and that's why they call today the present. Make the most of this beautiful day because this is a day that the Lord has made and let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Well, thanks for um, hanging in there with me today. We're going to hit about 45 minutes. Um, but next week we are going to be on the book of Daniel, which ends the books um, of the major prophets. We will then move into the minor prophets, um, and there, there are a bunch of uh, actually smaller books, so we'll probably do two, two on a Friday, um, and, and uh, before you know it, we'll be done with the Old Testament, you guys. Isn't it amazing, our journey here? And then we have 26 books in the New Testament, um, and we are going to shoot um, to being done by the holidays. I'm going to try to make that um, one of our, our goals so that we can then start talking about um, other things, um, daily feelings, which we kind of are now and stuff, but um, we'll, we'll get back on schedule with um, Thanksgiving and Christmas and all those wonderful things. So thank you very much, you guys, for joining me. I appreciate you so much for being in the word of the Lord with me. Um, I'm missing the Monday, Wednesday, Friday things, or the Wednesday, Friday, I should say. Um, but we'll get there. Just hang in with me throughout Lent. Um, and make sure to catch um, my Sunday sermons um, are online 
I put them on the High Plains page and Coffee with Christ with Shalise page. And also the Lent, Wednesday night Lent services will be on um, those two Facebook pages as well. So you can still receive a message on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, and, of course, our Wednesday night services are pretty much being led by the Confirmation Kids and others. And so catch those um, because they are doing an amazing job. So until next Friday, um, God bless and bye for now. Have a great, great week. Bye now.